Welcome to Amateur Sports TV. I'm Matias Bueno here with Lisa Thomas and Craig Machinsky of the St. Vitale Mustangs Football Club. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, Lisa and Craig, could you guys talk a, a little bit about your roles with the St. Vitale Mustangs Football Club and what it entails and how long you guys have been here with the team? Do you want me to go first? <laughs> okay, well, I'm the Director of Finance and I've been on the board in that position for, I think this is my 13th year. So it's a long time. Um, basically, I look after the finances and I oversee all our revenue producing areas such as the canteen and the, the merchandise store. I help with the um, special events, those kinds of anything that has to do with the money and finances. So pretty much anything. But And Craig, yourself? Uh, I, I hold the title of president right now of the club, but uh, that is, is, is a lot of different hats and a lot of different things that happens. I have previously a uh, director of football operations and I look after most of the committees that are run here, um, field operations and I assist with the clubhouse. So there, there, there's a lot of, I think all of us as volunteers wear a bunch of different hats here. And how long have you been with St. Patel? I have been at St. Patel Mustang since 1990. So that's going on 30 years next year then? No, nope, longer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, within your role and you guys wearing very different hats, what kind of brought you here to St. Patel in the first place? What was the origin of being involved with the club? Uh, well, my son started playing football when he was 13. Uh, so, came out here to bring him out and watch him play and uh, realize what an awesome place it was. And I had a couple of people say, well, why don't you, we could use some help. Why don't you come help? And I mean, we usually want people to do things that they're familiar with so I, I'm an accountant so I just kind of there was an opening for a director of finance so I fell into that and <laughs> nobody else wanted it after that so <laughs> I'm still here. And Craig for yourself what kind of pushed you into the role of St. Patel? I, uh, I first came over as a coach. Um, Jim Ladd uh, was, was, was in the middle of recruiting me to come over and help him coach his midget team back in 1990-91. Uh, so I came over as a coach initially in the, in the first step. Uh, I was here for a few years, went, uh, uh, did a few other things, uh, came back when my son was of age and uh, was a parent and a coach here for him as well. Uh, and now I don't have a kid playing here anymore. I'm in the administration and uh, just trying to make the club work. And so what, have you, what can you guys speak to in terms of the experience you've had with St. Patel and what has made you continue to come back seeing as how you guys have both had a significant tenure in terms of number of years served here at the club? Uh, well, for me, I think just uh, it, this place is more than just like it's all volunteer, right? We all volunteer when we all have to earn a living as well. So, uh, but we come here because we enjoy each other's company. There's there's awesome people here, uh, really good, giving, caring, hardworking people that care about the community and the sport and the people that play out here. And it's just you know, it's it, there's a social aspect to it too. We're friends and. So when I come out here to do work or help out with the canteen or help out with the registrar or whatever the case may be, it's, you know, you're just kind of hanging out with friends too. So it's, it's, it's pretty easy to stick around. I would, I, I would agree with that as well. Um, you know, I've, I've been around football and I was thinking the other day, it's been like 43 falls that I've been part of, of, of the sport every, every, every time fall rolls around in late spring or I'm sorry, late summer, but, um, you know, it's, it's the kids every year that come out that really, uh, you know, we're, we're at the club here and we're looking out the windows and you see, you know, uh, a minimum of 10 or 11 uh, kids of, uh, uh, teams of kids that are out there and aging from eight years old all the way up to tonight, the majors will be out here at, uh, at eight o'clock. Uh, and they are up to 23 years old. So, you know, we we really do touch and influence a lot of the youth, not only in this area, but uh, uh, interested in sport. Uh, and then in the last little while, we've we've taken on a junior team. So we have a lot, like we really have a lot of of, of youth and young kids playing sport here. Um, I'd rather them be here than be some other places, like their the basement playing on video games and. Uh, at 7-Elevens doing other things so uh, no it, it, it really it, it matters it mattered to me growing up I was a bit of a rambunctious youth and uh, just it's, it's, it's kind of given back and I love the look of the smiles and the kids when they come by and you know I mean a lot of times they don't know what goes into it or who contributed to what but you could just kind of tell 
their their appreciation and their happiness about you know being able to do what they do here. And in terms of the tenure that you guys have had here at St. Patel, what kind of growth and development have you seen over the years since you guys first started here at St. Patel? Well, since I started, we've had, uh, like Craig said, we've added a junior team to our sort of family here. We have a, a nice partnership with the Winnipeg Rifles. We have added girls football since I started. Uh, I, it wasn't in, there was no MGFA when I first started here, so that's a big exciting addition for us to have the girls teams play in the spring and a lot of those girls are now out there playing in the fall as well so um, we've added to our facility we've added the, our canteen and merchandise uh, store down at, by the by the uh, field there and it's a great addition it's a nice place to for people to come in and shop for our merchandise and buy a hot dog and a hamburger etc etc so it's been quite, quite a bit of change since we've added field lights actually since i've been here and I'm sure more since you started. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to ask me, it, it goes back 20, uh, further than the 25 years that we've been in out here in Maple Grove. We were in uh, uh, Memorial Park uh, behind Glenlawn School for ages and ages and ages. Uh, and we were there initially from 90 to about 94, 94. Uh, and then we were relocated here. So we went from a place that had a, a very finite area that we could actually play and practice and there was only three teams at the time um, there was bantams there was midgets and there was juniors and then the lady mustangs touch team was playing at that time since they've moved out here they've adopted all of the minor football teams uh, that dakota gave up or couldn't support anymore so we now have like i say we now have teams from seven eight years old all the way up to 23 and we have it at women as well as men now. So the changes I've seen is, is immense. I, I was part of, the part of the group that actually painted this club and put it together. Uh, you know, like there, there's a lot of sort of sweat equity that goes into it and a lot of, a lot of sort of effort that goes in. So, I mean, th this is our home and we made it that way. And like Lisa said, you know, we've done a lot of things. Like we started off just with these two fields to start with. We now have added a third field. We've now added, uh, like she said, the, uh, the lights project that we had uh, quite a while ago, six, eight years ago. Uh, we're now adding a small fourth field on the side here now so that we can get a couple of minor teams practicing. Um, there, there's just so much stuff going on that we, you know, every year we have a capital project that we look at how we want to do it, whether we want to add equipment or whether we want to add another parking lot or whether we, you know, would like add more lights somewhere else. Uh, there, there's always something going on and, and again, we have the addition, we have senior women's football here in the spring and we have now the junior rifles here in the fall. So we, we have right up to the, the full limit uh, and we're trying to accommodate them in every way we can. So that, th there is a lot of changes that have gone on. Like we actually renovated in here and we were only been here 25 years, but we renovated and cleaned it up because we had to. So if you were to put a finite number on the number of how many teams, men's and women's and girls, are all playing here at St. Patel, how many teams are there in total? We have nine, 10, 13? There's nine in this league, plus the rifles. Nine, 10, and two plus women. Plus two girls and yeah. women, so yeah. 13. So 13 teams, would you say, off the top of your head, that that's probably the most amount of teams offered by any club in all of Winnipeg? To my knowledge is, uh, I really am not sure some of the other clubs, um, they used to, I mean, football is in a downswing right now, unfortunately, I got, and it's terrible to, that we have to talk about that or that we have to think about that, but there, it's a little bit of a downswing. Part of it, I guess, has to do with some of the fears of concussion. Some of it has to do with kids active in other, in other sports or doing other things. Um, Whatever it may be, it's, it's in a bit of a down movement. But our, our, our club is still doing well. We, we're still flourishing. I mean, I remember a few years ago, the North Winnipeg Nomads, who are our, our neighbors way to, to the north, they had two and three teams at every age group at one point in time when there was people, the right people sort of driving in and recruiting it. But, you know, I guess we're on the downslope of, of, of interest. And, you know, uh, high school has gotten bigger now. So they've, you know, that has sort of uh, absorbed some of the kids that we normally get a club but uh, yeah it is pretty it's pretty high and and we've done it knowingly knowing that uh, you know if we want to do any improvements if we want to 
potentially maybe get turf in here or if we want to get um, you know the interest of the city or uh, anybody else that you know we're, we're gonna have to get everybody here and everybody's voice together in order for us to, to get that improvement or get the financial backing that we're looking for so we'll be right back after this quick commercial break and discuss more of the analysis of the teams for men boys and girls offered here at the St. Patel Mustangs Football Club at Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat-screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on Portage Avenue. Welcome back to Amateur Sports TV. Matias Bueno here with Craig Machinsky and Lisa Thomas of the St. Patel Mustangs Football Club. And we're talking the expansion of teams here at St. Patel and what would you guys kind of speak to in terms of how you've seen the club be able to handle the downswing of football and how the format changes have been adjusted to in terms of the teams that you guys have fielded and how you've been able to succeed on the field with the changes of the age limits and the number of teams that come and go from the league. <laughs> um, we have a real, uh, I would say, a very steady population of people come through here. Um, I've been asked a number of times, whether it be at a, a function or even at championship weekend or any of those, why, you know, where do we get the successes of the teams and where do we get, you know, the the kids coming out all the time. You know, we really have a real, a real turnover system here. And, and bear with me while I explain that, because what I mean is that we have really quite, quite good coaches here, and we have uh, a, a good amount of kids recruiting their friends and recruiting other kids. So um, we have a real good turnover of, say, parent A who has played football before, or maybe even a Mustang living in the area who now wants his child to play and now his child recruits his friends to play uh, etc etc so those kinds of things really help us to try to bring more new players new families new people to the game but but it also helps us to bring football uh, familiar people back so not not only are we just getting parents to come out and coach because I think that's a real key to this whole thing is, is that we're not just getting parents to coach, we're getting ex-players or people who have been in the program and understand the positives of the program and what it, what it means to give back and turn it back. And, and you know, like we, we, there's a couple of them out there now, like Andy, uh, Andy Wall and Trevor Forscat that I coached them as, as, a, as, a, as a coach myself. They were players with my midget team. And, they're, they're, they're great people. They're both, they're uh, City of Winnipeg policemen. They're both, uh, you know, uh, they both get it in that it's not just about winning football games. It's about teaching the kids a lot more about it, teaching them about some respect, teaching them about, you know, the efforts of it, the te uh, teaching them camaraderie, teaching them, you know, the fun things about playing a team sport and stuff like that. So those kinds of things, from, from my perspective, I, that's some, one of the most positive things from this club as we do that. And then the second portion of it, and I guess you can probably talk to a bit more, are volunteer people that really, um, you know, um, everybody has to do their volunteer time for their club or for whatever sport their kids are playing. But we really have some, some that go beyond, above and beyond where, you know, they, they have to do six hours. Well, they're doing 106 hours, you know what I mean? So uh, they really love to see the, the look of what we you know, and, and, and they get on board with what we, uh, what we try to put together and that we try to put together the, the most positive uh, effect and the most positive experience we can get for kids and their families while they're here. Whether they be uh, the Brandon Wolverines or whether they be the Transcona Nationals, it doesn't really matter. We're still trying to, you know, we'll have a nice, we'll have our merchandise, we'll have the barbecue going, we'll have good canteen for them. Uh, we'll have washroom facilities. We'll make sure that, uh, you know, if they need water, they have water. Uh, we have trainers here that will look after them. So we try to give them the best potential experience, I think, that they can get out of it. So I, that really helps. That, that's a real contributor, I think, that helps keep, keep bring people back. 
And in terms of your experience here as the director of finance, how have you kind of been able to be surprised or maybe not surprised by how the club has been able to continue to generate revenue from continuous registration and how they've been able to handle the shifting of teams, but being able to keep that steady pace. What what do you kind of feel has contributed to that success here at St. Patel? Well, I think for starters, we have a good board and a good group of people and that continues through, throughout the years and they are willing to, I think one thing you have to do as an organization is recognize what's going on around you and make uh, efforts and and try new ideas, change with the time sort of thing. So, I mean, we're talking about a downswing in registration. That's a reality. So how do we cope with that financially? I mean, we have uh, several different revenue streams. We are fortunate enough to have this uh, building and this hall that we're in right now we rent out uh, for socials and, and things like that. And we have a great uh, couple of people that look after that for us. So that generates revenue for us. We have people that are willing to spend a lot of time in the canteen with new ideas and making sure that things sell with our merchandise, things like that. Um, partnership with Rifles, partnership with the Fearless, uh, bringing new people and different groups into their, uh, different age groups even into our fold. This year we're starting um, a first down program that um, Football Manitoba introduced last year to sort of uh, encompass the younger kids, the four to seven year olds, I believe. So we have one of my teammates on Fearless has graciously agreed to come out and help us with that and run that. So, I mean, that will now, you know, you bring those kids on at four, five, six, seven, and then they continue on throughout our program. So I think, I mean, in a nutshell, you just, you have to go with the times and, and think of new things and, and, uh, and uh, what's the right word, Ad adopt to, to how things are changing. Now you're talking about the adoption of the Winnipeg Rifles Football Club of the CJFL here to St. Vital to practice and to play a game here. What does that mean, especially as a member, being a member of the staff, what does that mean for the rest of the kids and the parents at St. Vital and how it bolsters the reputation of the club and how it gives an opportunity for a greater team in Manitoba to be able to play football here? I, th I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a little bit of a biased opinion, of course, <laughs> but... Um, uh, I, I think it's, it's only positive. It really is only positive. Uh, we have done it, I'm trying to uh, describe it properly, um, tenderly in, uh, to mix in with our, with our programs. As you can see outside, we've created a third, a third area separate from where the other teams are practicing so that we can maintain the, the level of respect um, um, and integrity of their programs without having, you know, recruiting an older program to come in and take over the, the club and take over you know, the best equipment, the best facility, the best spaces, all that kind of stuff. So we, we, were, we were trying to be careful with that to make sure that it was more of an integration rather than a, a takeover. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, we have a couple of home games now. We have three home games here at St. Patel this year that, uh, that the, uh, the Rifles have chosen to be here. Um, one of them, they can't, because of the schedule, play at IG this year, so they're going to play here. So they get a third game. And they're, they're, they're quite happy with that. They have made some uh, changes to our facility in that they, uh, they have expanded our press box to accommodate a lot of things. They've uh, uh, helped to uh, get game day, um, you know, whether it's lining the field, putting numbers in the field, all sorts of things. There's a give and take with them. Uh, the young kids, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that they, I mean, you can see when the team runs by or after practice or, or, you know, beginning when they go out to practice field, the young fellas, they stop their practice and watch the big guys run by and do their thing. Uh, I know last week we went over to the, to the sled, our line, my linebacker group, and, uh, and there was a bunch that kind of came around and sort of circled around and watched the guys hit the sled for a while. Uh, knowing that, okay, I want to do that someday too. Um, so I, I think there, there's an awe and a bit of respect there. Um, I think they're they're okay with it as long as it doesn't impede on what they're doing. If you mm -hmm. kind of get my drift on that, oh, of course. Um, but you know, I, we have been we have been very smartly trying to uh, uh, accept them, create a partnership, and make sure that whatever we do, we do together and smartly. So. 
you know, last year we had our 70th anniversary dinner and they they came on as a sponsor and helped and bought a couple tables and, you know, they, they did that kind of stuff. So, uh, I mean, we have ex-Mustangs here. We have ex-Mustangs on the coaching staff. We have, you know, and, and just good football people in general. So, um, to answer your question, I'm, I'm hoping that everybody embraces that they're here and they, they seem to look up to them, whether they all come out and... And, and support us on our game days. I, I hope I hope that happens. We're going to try to do that. Um, it's just it's just another faction of what we want to offer here, whether it's uh, crunchers, uh, seven eight year olds, or whether it's rifles, twenty two year olds. Like we want to be able to try to offer as much of a variety as possible. And when Lisa, you mentioned the pro the first down program that Football Manitoba had implemented and. What kind of positive effect do you think that will bring to the club here at St. Vitale with introducing football to kids at a younger age than Crunchers or than Adam and how it will increase the positive on football here in Manitoba and especially here at the club in St. Vitale? Well, I, I think it's a great program. Uh, we unfortunately weren't be able to take advantage of it last year when they first brought it out. Um, but we have, I think, nine or ten kids signed up already for it this year and uh, a really good person running it, a really knowledgeable football lady who actually played midgets here uh, some time ago and now plays fearless with me and her daughter is eight, five I think so she's the right age so she's um, running it for us and I think you know they're going to be out here with the other kids they're not in gear they're not doing football drills per se but they're doing football related uh, mobility agility stuff and you know learning the right movements and the footwork and stuff like that with the the uh, drills that they do in their program. Um, it'll be our first time with it, so I'm really excited. I'm helping her out, and I'd I love to see how it all works. And I think it'll, you know, they've got brothers and sisters that already play, so it'll be a good sort of segue for the younger kids to just continue on when they're, when they're old enough and ready. We'll be right back with a quick commercial break after these messages, and we will cover the analysis of Manitoba Girls Football Association, Association here, as well as some of the boys' teams that have started to grow as the years have gone on. If you take the first mortgage you're offered, a high interest rate could take your travel budget and send it packing. Before you choose a mortgage, take a second look. Get serious about your mortgage. Contact Case Financial Group today. If you take the biggest mortgage you can get, you might find your budget can't support other important costs, like buying furniture. Don't let your mortgage weigh you down. Get serious about your mortgage. Contact Case Financial Group today. Welcome back to Amateur Sports TV. Matias Bueno here with Lisa Thomas and Craig Machinsky of the St. Patel Mustangs Football Club. Now we're talking about the programs that St. Patel offers for boys and girls. And Lisa, can you kind of take us through how St. Patel has been a bit of a pioneer in terms of creating an opportunity for girls to play football at the amateur level as you yourself play at the women's level and now St. Patel is taking part in giving this chance for girls to play at younger than 18 and younger than 16. Yep, yeah, sure. Um, well, there was a couple of wonderful women that started uh, a girls league in the city. Uh, Lisa Cummings and Tannis Wilson started the MGFA. And that I think was about nine years ago. I always get my timeline wrong, but I think it was about nine years ago. Um, and all the clubs were approached to see if they would like to uh, participate and put a, a team in. And so we worked really hard here to try and get enough girls to play. It's, it's six aside football, so you need at least, I think, 17, 18 kids on a team to make it work well. So we did a bunch of recruiting and we were able to get some really good teams out in the first few years. We had some great coaches and some great teams and it's just sort of continued over the course of the, the nine years. We've had you know coaches come and go and, and kids come in and move in. It's a, it's a, there's a lot of, um, girls who try it for the first time. We also always have lots of new new football players and then they seem to really love it and thrive in it. So, And then a lot of them cross over into our fall league and, and where it's predominantly boys, but there's quite a, there's more and more girls every year playing in that league. So. What kind of success would you say that the St. Tom Mustangs have had in terms of the MGFA and as the time has gone on from that nine years ago, how it's grown to create a great name for football and an opportunity like in terms of girls being able to play and girls not having the desire to play and wanting to join and be able to move up to that next level of fearless and, and the Wolfpack. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity for girls. I mean, I got to start playing football when I was 41, so no, it's a little bit 
a little bit better for these ladies. They can start, at, we start at 10 years old, so they come out and there's, there's tons of opportunity for them to now play a girl against other girls if that's what they choose. They can come and play against guys if they choose. They can do both. And, and then there's, again, the, the senior women's teams and the, us and the Winnipeg Wolf Pack in the city here that they can move on to after. So um, from when I was a kid to now, worlds apart in, in terms of opportunity for girls to play football. There's, you know, there's provincial teams and, and national teams and there's world competition for women too. So it's, it's uh, definitely leaps and bounds over the years and and we've been fortunate and really honored and proud to be a part of the, the growth of that and how has St. Patel as a club been able to receive the, this opportunity and how have they kind of run away with it and helped to make the game grow for girls over these over this course of a decade um, well I think just we've gotten really involved uh, with the league and uh, with with all the with the the women's leagues and the the MGFA and I mean we've I'm our rep right now for uh, for St. Patel on that league so I mean just staying involved and making sure that we continue to as you know same thing I was talking about earlier just um, trying new ideas trying new ways to get girls interested just basically to get the word out I mean it still surprises me how many people don't know that there is girls and women's football in the city after you know the number of years we've been around but it's reality so we we do a lot of uh, work on advertising and and trying to get the word out and getting the girls to talk to each other and, and come out and play and just continue to grow. I think last year or the year before we actually had two senior teams. We had enough for two senior teams. So so we, we usually have a significant number of girls out here playing. In terms of the boys teams and how they've been very dominant in the leagues that they've played in, how many boys teams are there currently and and what has been their success and how they've been able to revel and continue to maintain success over the years with obviously the increasing level of high school players and the desire to play high school as well as kids being able to move on and play rifles compared to major. I think the largest amount of teams that we've had in any one fall has been 10 or 11. We're right now fielding nine teams and then we'll have the rifles on the other field. So that, that's really 10 teams that we have here. So we have uh, double double allotments, double rosters at you know, every age from crunchers to, uh, to peewee. Uh, the Bathams are a sing single team. Uh, the Midgets are operating as a, a, a separate project this year, but it, it will be a team of players. Uh, and then of course there's the Majors as well. So we, we've got a good group of solid young men. Um, and what we find is most of them a little less these days, but most of them will move up through the system. So they'll come and play quite early at an early age, whether it would be seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, um, or a little bit later. But the, usually they'll stick around and they'll play with their buddies. They'll, it, it, the stimulus from what they get from coming out to play football and hanging out with their buddies and playing ball here has been positive enough for them to come back. So we, we have a lot of We'll call it retention <laughs> in business it's like retention we, 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 we retain a lot of our players or if players leave like nowadays they go to play high school uh, a lot of the kids that go to play st paul's um, Vincent massey dakota etc a lot of them will come back or have, have been recruited to come back and play major football here so it's it's, it's good and especially I, I believe you touched on it earlier talking about that giving back in the program and what has been the kind of numbers or the, the success that St. Patel has had in terms of retention of old players or, old, or people who have been able to put themselves forward as volunteers to coach and to still be involved in the club after they're done playing? How has that kind of contributed to the success of the team with having guys who have used to play for St. Patel and now come back to coach midget or major or bantam or whatever, whichever team that they I, I think it's, an, it's, it's, it's very large, it's immense to, to, to me personally and again through the when I was a director of football operations. The difference between having a someone who maybe is an adult who's organized and could be a coach but is new to the sport as opposed to someone who has a background in the sport, understands it, maybe was coached by you know Hall of Famer Jim Ladd or someone like that. Uh, and then would come out and have that background on, on some of the basics and, and the ideas that 
he learned or she learned he learned at the time to come back and to direct that to kids i mean i i think it's just a step ahead no matter no matter how great the 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 person is or the gentleman is or the or the woman is um I think it's just that little bit step extra because you have people that have played the sport. They understand it. They understand the needs of it. They understand um, what you get out of it if you put into it. Uh, that kind of stuff. So I, 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 I think it's it's, it's immense. Um, you know, um, we had a Hall of Fame, like I said in the previous session, that we had a Hall of Fame dinner here last year, and we are uh, presently every year putting people into our Hall of Fame now. More and more are the contributors of the past, but they are people like, uh, you know, we put Stu Heaton in there. Stu Heaton is now across the road coaching rifles. Um, you know, we, we have people like that that just have a passion for the game and understanding of, of the positives that you get from the competition and from the sport itself. And it's, they absorb it and, and embrace it largely. And um, they just want to come back. They want to come back because they, they know, not only do they get stimulated, but their contribution to the kids and the families out there are, are they're contributing to it as well. Now, St. Patel has had a lot of success in terms of championships and winning and what is what would you say is the root of the success that St. Patel has had to be a title contender in almost any league they play in every single year? It has been pretty 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 positive it has been pretty lucrative the last number of years. Um, I, I'm not sure I can I can put my finger on it per se I just know that uh, um, kids the kids really pick up on on the coaching here, and the, and the, the guys do a really great job. Um, uh, they, they emphasize they emphasize the, uh, the the basics of the game. I notice that a lot. So that you know, when you get to the finals, it's it's. I mean, you ask Coach O'Shea the same thing. He's not changing his practice plan because it's the Great Cup or a, or a playoff game. He's going through the same preparation, and the same stuff with his team. These guys have the same. These ladies and gentlemen who coach our kids have the same kind of idea because they've they've come through the system and understood what it takes to win and uh, coaching, establishing good basics, getting people to uh, to get the positives out of the game, uh, the hard work, the being here every night. Uh, you have to work for everything. Those type of things I think really help and reflect because um, I do know a couple of the teams that were in the finals last year. I don't think you would say they were favored maybe because they didn't have that you know that young lad that young player who maybe could just carry the team on their back they played as a team and they ended up being victorious why because they they played and practiced and understood what it was like to, for the team game so uh, I, I that's a big kudos more i think to the to the coaches um and to and to the the organization as a group just sort of bringing through everybody and learning uh, the basics of the game and then the game has evolved it's different now like you know it used to be just give it to the fastest kid and let him run well things are changing now i mean you have even the young the young groups now who are forced to throw the ball so they have learned to adapt a bit with the time but you know every, any night you can come out here and you watch all of these coaches they are blocking and tackling and teaching to find it, like how, how kids should step into somebody how the the safe portion of where their hands should be where their head should be they, they they really understand that, and it's it's really a detriment to other teams, and it's really positive for us. The, yeah, the last few teams, last few years, it's been a, a big red weekend at Championship Weekend. I'd have to say that. Yeah, we'll be back with a quick commercial break after these messages with a few words from some Saint Patel Mustangs players about what it means to play here at Saint Patel. Hi, I'm Nettie Weiss from Metal Master. You had an accident. Sometimes they're embarrassing, but they're always inconvenient. We have an incredible staff to take care of. We have platinum certified techs in four different categories. We are certified as a gold class accredited shop. If you've made a claim already, perfect. Call us with your claim number. If you need a claim open, give us a call. We'll walk you through. Sometimes you can get a little nervous dealing with NPI. We'll help you. Welcome back to Amateur Sports TV. Matias Bueno here with Addison and Dallas of the St. Patel Mustangs Football Club. Guys, welcome to the show. Hi. So, 
you guys here have been at Saint Vitale for how many number of years? How many, how many years uh, have you been here? This Saint is Vitale? my second year. And how many years have you been and at Saint Vitale? This Saint is Vitale? my fourth year. Fourth year. So, some seasoned veterans here with the Saint Vitale Mustangs football club. And which teams, respectively, do you guys play for here? Uh, I play for their Bantam. And I play for the Adam team and a girls team in the spring. So, Addison, can you talk a little bit about the addition and what it means to play on that girls team as well as play on the Adam team with the boys? What is that, what is that kind of experience like? Um, it's kind of... Um, does it feel... Does it feel like exciting or is there a different dynamic when you play with the girls team versus playing on the Adam team? For on the girls team, I feel like more at like, more like, I feel better playing on the girls team because like I am a girl and like, I like talking to people on there more. On the boys team, it's kind of different than that. Do you, do you find that there's a similar level of excitement once you strap with the pads and get on the field and play in the games, or is that a little bit different too? In the girls, it's kind of like less like ex kind of extremer than the boys one, but on the boys one, we go like all out all the time. How long have you played on the autumn team? Uh, this is my first year playing on the autumn team. First year. Did you play for uh, like one of the boys teams last year? Or no, is just this, this is your first, first year playing. Year. Oh, okay, okay. Do, do you enjoy the experience so far, or how many how many weeks is it into? Has it been into practices and stuff? Uh, this is this my second week into practices. Oh, second week, and you're liking it so far? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And for yourself, Dallas, how how have you taken the opportunity to play here at Saint Patel, and what is your favorite part about being a part of this football club and a part of a, a football team? Uh, I guess my favorite part of being a part of a football team is like you always feel included and like basically no matter like how tall how short you are you can always like do something because like I kind of used to play basketball and it didn't feel that way but um and it's always like everyone's like super nice here so it's like you always feel included in something so and what does it mean for you to play here at St. Patel what's one of your favorite things while being a part of the club since you've been here for four years um well, my favorite thing about being in this club is, uh, like, I guess the teammates, the coaches are super respectful, and in certain other teams, you might not get exactly that, and it's a very good team. Like, all around, all the Mustangs teams are pretty good, so. And asking for yourself, what does it mean here to play at St. Patel? What's your favorite part about um, being a part of this football club? My favorite part is that, like, with the girls and the boys team, I feel like very included in them. And, like everybody's so nice, and we always like. You guys feel you get along well. There's a lot yeah. of camaraderie, but it, it makes you feel a part of something greater. Is, is that like one of the yeah. feelings yeah. you say you guys have? Now, in your tenure here at Saint Vitel, have you guys played in any high stakes games before? Have you guys, you guys, go to the playoffs? Have you played in a championship game or won a championship game before here? In my first, my first year, they brought me to championships. Actually, that when I played Bantam, I came in champions, and we kind of, kind of got smoked, but it, it was still fun regardless. And yourself, Addison, have you played in a championship game yet here before at Saint Vitel, or not yet? Yeah, this previous year that I've played girls, we won the championship. And what was that feeling like? What did it mean to, to be a St. Patel Mustang wearing the red jersey on the field when you guys, when it was all over and you were a champion? What did it feel like? Oh, I was so happy because, like, the previous, um, the previous two years that I've played with them, we, we only won one game in those two years. So to, like, win the championship, that, like, meant a lot. And would you guys say that over the, you guys are still fairly young, but would you say that football has started to emerge as one of your, or if not, your favorite sports so far? Or have you guys played in multiple sports? For sure. You like yeah. football, yeah. yeah? Football is very a very tremendous sport, and we've talked to Lisa and Craig about the importance of football here at St. Patel and what it means to be a part of this club and the pride that comes with wearing the red jersey and, and having the Mustang on the side of your helmet. And are there, are there any last words you guys have for us and for the folks out there watching? Not really. Just Mustangs is a good team. And yourself, Addison, what, what, what would you like to wrap up with? 
Love St. Patel? Yeah. Love playing football? Yeah. Girls should try playing football more? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think I'd agree as well. Well, I thank you guys for taking the time to come on to the show today. And we'll be right back with a quick commercial from our sponsor. Welcome back to Amateur Sports TV. Matthias Bueno here, signing off with Lisa Thomas and Craig Bachinski of the St. Patel Mustangs Football Club. Guys, thanks so much for being on the show today. And what kind of last words do you have to say to the folks out there watching at home about what it means to be at St. Patel and what you look forward to this season or what you look forward to every season? Uh, well, for me, I just I look forward to coming back out here, watching the kids practice and play. Uh, it's a great place to be if you have a kid that's interested in football and and you live in this area, by all means, send them out here. They're gonna have an awesome experience. I wanna put a quick plug in for our Hall of Fame uh, event in September. We're having a September 28th here at the club. So if you are interested, there's tickets online on our website. Um, that's always a fun time too. So it's just a great place to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, it, every year it's, uh, it's it, I'll call it a new challenge, but it's it, it's a consistent uh, requirement that, uh, for me anyway, that we see all these kids running around out here and having a good time. Um, it really upsets me if I if I see anybody withdrawing from a program or or that doesn't want to continue. And we really want to make sure that everybody gets what they what they need out of the sport and what they should get out of the sport. Um, we've done we, we've done a really really hard job I, uh, we work very very hard in trying to make sure that we can uh, stimulate and, and touch on uh, young men and young women from just about all ages here and and we're, every year we want to we want to do something more and something better and uh, I just I encourage anybody who's watching this who, who doesn't play football or who doesn't think that they're their youngster should be playing the sport. There's all levels of football, and there's all all factions of it. Whether they play flag, whether they play touch, or whether you play tackle football. And I played I played 10 years without a broken bone. I've coached 43 years, or 33 years total, and uh, uh, very few injuries occur because we prepare our kids to play the game, and we prepare them on how to play, the, how to take a hit, how to give a hit and how to have the most fun they can get out of the game. So I encourage everybody to come out and try the game. Guys, thank you so much for being on the show. And that will wrap it up for today at St. Patel Mustangs Football Club. This is Matias Bueno, Amateur Sports TV, St. Patel. At Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat-screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on Portage Avenue.